Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, woo hoo hoo and his mercy, it endureth forever. God bless you this morning. Welcome to Sunday School, Sunday School, Sunday School at the Gospel Truth Apostolic Church. I am your co-founder, pastor, Dr. Valerie D. Clark, and we're excited this morning that the Lord have afforded us the privilege once again to be in Sunday School. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school. Of course, you know what we do. We like and we share. And I'm going to do that just now so that we all, hallelujah, can partake of this great endeavor that the Lord has for us today. Hallelujah. Sunday school, everybody. Everybody everywhere ought to go to Sunday school. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're excited this morning, so grateful, hallelujah, that the Lord have blessed us on this day that he have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a wonderful day. It's a marvelous day. It's a day that we have never seen before, and having therefore obtained help from God, we continue unto this day witnessing to those both great and small. Come on in the house, come on in the house. This is the house of prayer. So we're excited this morning. Hallelujah, so grateful, hallelujah, that the Lord have afforded us a privilege once again to be among them that are sanctified on this first Sunday of December. We're at it, Zion, the last Sunday of the month. The month of December, God has been good to us all through the year of 2023 in spite of everything have not gone our way. Oh, no, it has not. But yet we're grateful. We're still here. Hallelujah. We're yet focused. Hallelujah. We have the activity of our limbs and we are here. Hallelujah. Live and in color. Hallelujah. So come on in the house of prayer. Good morning. God bless you this morning. Our precious mother Ruby, we're just grateful. Hallelujah. Because God is on the throne. Hallelujah. And as we're concluding our chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians today, hallelujah, we just want to thank the Lord that he's been with us throughout. Hallelujah these days hallelujah throughout these hours hallelujah and sometimes it comes so till you have to thank the lord for the very moments hallelujah that he have afforded you the privilege to be in is that right so we're grateful hallelujah because having therefore obtained help from god we continue unto this day witnessing to those both great and small let the church shout hallelujah Hallelujah. So as we focus on our lesson this morning of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, hallelujah, we're focused on uh, verses 17 through 34. And this is somewhat a familiar text because most of us that have been uh, in the church, hallelujah, uh, members of churches, hallelujah, have participated in what we call communion. So today we're going to speak on uh, the Lord's Supper, the observance of it. Just what does it mean, hallelujah, to us as believers. Hallelujah. So before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being our soon coming king. We thank you, Lord, for being our guiding light. We thank you for being our sustainer. We thank you, Lord, and we know that it's because of you that we have our being, we live, and we move because of you. And Father, we pray this morning that you let the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, be acceptable with thee, for truly you are our strength 
and you are our redeemer and we're grateful to you lord hallelujah and we pray oh god hallelujah that something be said today to encourage someone to have a closer walk with you as they endeavor even the more to be members of sunday school sunday school and we thank you for this in all things in jesus name we pray amen 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 well god bless you of course most of you know for the last couple of sundays we have ex been experiencing some technical difficulty but we're here today and we're just going to go forward and believe god to continue to bless us hallelujah that we'll have everything that we need to be uh, complete this morning in sunday school hallelujah so let us go forward we'll be reading for you hearing verses uh, 17 through 34 of first corinthians chapter 11 hallelujah and of course i know you have your bibles already so we'll get right to it hallelujah that's first corinthians chapter 11 verses 17 through 34 and it reads as follows now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. Well, verse 22. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? And shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemnedly condemned, that is, with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word. 
Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah for the reading of the word of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for God's word. Hallelujah. That inspires us and encourages us as we as believers have that closer walk with him. Well, thank God you're in Sunday school this morning. God bless you. Elder Michael, you're here. So grateful to see you this morning. And our own brother Larry, hallelujah. It's good always to be in the house of the Lord. And certainly it's good to be in Sunday school where most of us received our foundational training. Hallelujah. So we're grateful this morning as we delve into these scriptures. Hallelujah. The observance of the Lord's Supper. Um, this is a subject, hallelujah, I remember as a young child growing up in the church, I didn't quite understand exactly what was going on, and I'm thinking, hmm, what is really going on, hallelujah. But of course, as I got older and began to listen to the scriptures that the uh, pastor or the preacher would explain before the observance of the Lord's Supper, I began to think this is a good thing, hallelujah. But how many of you know we notice during this time, if you've ever been in the church for any length of time, it seems like during this time of service, so many would stay at home and I never could understand that. Hallelujah, because we all would have the opportunity as we say to examine ourselves and to, as we say, get right with God. Hallelujah. And as we get right with God, certainly, you know, the pastor or the preacher or teacher would allow space for you if you needed to talk to him or if you needed to speak to someone or so forth because it was imperative that we all partake of this communion. Hallelujah. Because it's going to give strength. Hallelujah to the body. It's going to draw us closer to the Lord. Hallelujah. So here, Apostle Paul, hallelujah, he's letting the church of Corinth know, hey, yet getting messages, and I've heard that there is some divisions among you. How many of you know as people of God, we are one, one unit, one, we're together together. We should be speaking the same thing, hallelujah, doing the same thing, because we're one body, hallelujah. You don't find your body, hallelujah, the upper part is on the east side of town and the lower part is on the west side of town. No, we're one, we're together, hallelujah. And that's the way it should be when we are in the body of Christ. So Apostle Paul here, as he expresses, hallelujah, concern, hallelujah, for the notes, for the information that he has been receiving. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, hallelujah, that ye come together not for better, but for worse. For first of all, when ye come in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And he says here, I hardly believe it. Hallelujah. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be manifest among you. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. As I often say, we must do better. And as I believe we grow in grace for certain, that is what we do. We do get better. Hallelujah, because we do not want to be unworthy. We do not want to be unfit. Hallelujah, to be a part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And certainly, when we see that there are divisions among us. Hallelujah. Ah, you know I'm the signature preacher, line upon line, precept upon precept. So for certain, yes, we're going to the word of God. You got your Bibles this morning, hallelujah. We are going to the word of God because there should not, there should not be divisions among us. We are one. We're together, hallelujah. And when there are divisions, hallelujah, 
then there is every evil work because then there's strife, hallelujah, it creeps in. Hallelujah. But the Bible declares in Luke 11, Luke chapter 11, verse 17. You have your Bibles? But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. So we must be together. Hallelujah. How are we going to win the world? Hallelujah. Excuse me. How are we going to win the world and we're divided? Hallelujah. You're speaking A, B. I'm speaking E, F. And then there's someone else speaking J, K. Hallelujah. And the divisions are all mixed up. But whereas we must speak the same thing, because we are one body. Come on, somebody help me pray and teach Sunday school this morning and type on the comment line, one body. We are one body. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, Evangelist Sandra. So glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. It's good for us to know, hallelujah, as we continue hallelujah, to seek the Lord. We want to speak the same thing. Hallelujah. We want the Lord, hallelujah, to know that we're together because when we're divided, it weakens us. Hallelujah. And for certain, hallelujah, the Bible have clearly stated, a house divided against itself shall not stand. Is that right? Ah, the Bible declares, hallelujah, in first. Uh, Corinthians 1 10 hallelujah just above our lesson hallelujah now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment why Hallelujah, because we have a great big world. Hallelujah, Sister Smith. God bless you. Thank you for sharing the lies. We have a great big world, hallelujah, that's listening to us. They're watching how we conduct, hallelujah, ourselves among one another. And when you're saying something that's not according to the scriptures, hallelujah, it may be a revelation that you got in your dream, maybe after the 4th of July, I don't know, hallelujah, but if it's not according to the scripture, hallelujah, then it shouldn't be stated, hallelujah, because we all have opinions, hallelujah, but the Lord have clearly stated, Zion, that we are to preach the word, hallelujah, that is the word of God, the scriptures, hallelujah, because my opinion, your opinion, it doesn't matter, it's God's heaven, hallelujah, and that's what's going to be the deciding factor. He is large and in charge, and whatever he says, that's what's going to fly, hallelujah. Not, hallelujah, my opinion, your opinion, Johnny, Susie, Sally's, Tom, Dick, or Harry's, it's not important. What God says is his heaven, hallelujah, and we want to go to his heaven, so therefore, we have to want to do, and we have to do what he has said. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, I declare hallelujah. There can't be, there should not be division among us. You getting in your own little sect, hallelujah. You getting in your own little clique with your two, hallelujah. You getting in your little clique with your three or four, Hallelujah. Y'all know that ain't right. Hallelujah. And God said, no, sir, I can't have it like that. And it should not be like that because it weakens us. And we want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. So we clear clearly note, hallelujah, that we want to banish any thought of if there's church strife. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 
focusing on verses 17 through 34. Hallelujah. We're speaking on the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. Remembering the death. Hallelujah. Of the Lord. His suffering. He did it for you and for me. Is that right, Zion? So therefore, hallelujah, we have to make sure, hallelujah, that out of all we do and we say that it is to edify the body of Christ. It's to edify our brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let the church shout glory. Ah, the Bible declares, hallelujah, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Hmm? You yet have your Bibles open? For ye are not, for ye are yet carnal. Let me read that again. <laughs> for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among ye envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Come on, Zion. You say, oh, well, Pastor Val, I just can't help it. That's just me. Well, that's the reason why you're born again. Born of the water and born of the spirit so that it won't be just you. Hallelujah. But because you have been changed. Hallelujah. Old things. Hallelujah. Are passed away. Things you used to do, you don't do no more. Hallelujah. The songs I used to sing, I don't sing no more. The people I used to be with, I don't be no more. Why? Because we're new creatures, hallelujah, in Christ Jesus. So therefore, we have to do it, hallelujah, and show the example to our other brothers and sisters that, hey, this is correct. This is the right way to go. Let the church shout hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. It's imperative, hallelujah. Hallelujah that we partake of communion, hallelujah. When it's that time, hallelujah, for the church to come together to do this uh, in remembrance of the Lord, we want to come together. We don't want to stay at home. Oh, well, I know I'm not worthy, hallelujah. You'll never be worthy, hallelujah, but you want the Lord to count you as worthy, hallelujah, because you've been striving lawfully, hallelujah, and you know for certain if you have an odd against your brother or sister, hey, this is the time to get it right, because keep in mind, if you don't get it right and it's his time to come back for his people, you're going to be left with your work undone. So now, while it is called today, let us get out of church strife. Let us get out of divisions. Hallelujah. And we want to do it as the Lord have commanded us to do it. And we want to observe, hallelujah, the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. In the spirit of unity. All right. So the Bible have declared, hallelujah, and it said, I believe, in uh, verse uh, 19, let's see, I think that's verse 19, hallelujah, that it's stated, for there also, for there must be also heresies among you that they may, that they which are approved may be made manifest. When ye come together, therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For eating, for an eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunkard. Hallelujah. So then we don't be carnal about this. Of course, I understand that in the biblical days, hallelujah, when they had uh, this feast, which they considered it a feast, it was more as uh, what we would call today a potluck. You know how when we have our um, Christmas gatherings or uh, Christmas office uh, celebrations, everybody brings a dish or so forth. Hallelujah. And so that's where it was back in that day. Hallelujah. But of course, as today, hallelujah, is somewhat different. Whereas now, hallelujah, we all gather together and we do sup, you know, drink of the Lord's uh, blood, the 
signification of his blood and certainly the symbolism of his body, the bread. Hallelujah. So we make sure we wait on one another and do it together. But back in that day, hallelujah, the rich and famous, honey, they had their own little group. They were doing it their way. Hallelujah. Eating and drinking and getting drunk. Hallelujah. Whereas the poor little slaves, they didn't have too much of anything. Hallelujah. But God has said in his word for us to wait for one another, tarry with one another. Hallelujah. And tarry means to wait. So we wait with one another. And then we come together and we eat and we sup together. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, oh, my God. Hallelujah. The Bible is so bright and it's so fulfilling. Hallelujah. And we continue, hallelujah, to go forward in him. Hallelujah. Amen. You all bear with me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I am really, hallelujah. Amen. I believe the heat is up a little bit high, but I'm going to be okay. Y'all keep praying for me. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible is clear. Hallelujah. As we go on a little further, hallelujah. And he says in the scripture, hallelujah. And this is, uh, let's see, uh, verse 20. I think I just read that. And also 21. Mm -hmm. This is chapter 11. For in eating, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we, uh, verse 21. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another drunken. Okay, so we pretty much stated that. Hallelujah. But we want to wait on one another, and we want to do this together. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah. What? Have ye not houses to eat or drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying, hallelujah, as we gather together here. Hallelujah. There is room now. Hallelujah. Because as we have gathered together, hallelujah, and this is something that you have to realize this is a sacred time, hallelujah, when we gather together for the Lord's uh, Supper or for communion. Hallelujah, this is sacred, is that right? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So we go forward, hallelujah. And then the Lord says, hallelujah, you have to know, hallelujah, that as this time is sacred, hallelujah, that you must not misuse this. Hallelujah. So therefore, hallelujah, uh, the Lord, hallelujah, he is one that will let you know, oh yes, there is space for reproof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know the Lord, hallelujah, he gives us pastors after his own heart, and sometimes just as the Lord has to reprove us, rebuke us, hallelujah, sometimes he expects, hallelujah, his pastors, hallelujah, to do the same thing among the sheep, hallelujah. So he says here in uh, Proverbs, you got your Bibles? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 5. A fool despises his father instruction. Excuse me. But he... A fool despises his father's instructions, excuse me, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So we want to be wise unto salvation. Hmm? What did the Lord say to us, Sister Smith? <coughs> excuse me, that we are wise as serpents, yet harmless as doves. So then we continue to go forward in the Lord. We continue, hallelujah, to do, hallelujah, what the Lord have unctioned us to do. Is that right? Hallelujah. Ah, oh, my God, hallelujah. So then as we continue, hallelujah, to cipher out, hallelujah, as we observe the Lord's body, hallelujah, that was given for us, the blood, hallelujah, he shed for us, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
This is all in remembrance, hallelujah, that we do this, have the Lord's Supper or communion as we call it, in remembrance of him. We're remembering what the Lord did for us, how he sacrificed his life for you and for me. Let the church shout hallelujah. Mm. Ah, so the Bible is clear, hallelujah, even in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 5. Hmm? See, there's value in reproof because sometimes it is necessary. Hallelujah. How many of you know, hallelujah, when your little children, as precious as they are, but when they continue, hallelujah, to do the wrong thing at the wrong time, you have to put some of that leather on their behind and let them know, uh-uh. No, child, not today. I told you. No. Hallelujah. But they continue to be disobedient and hard-headed, then you don't spare the rod. Is that right? Because if you spare the rod, the Bible said you spoil the child. And how many of you know that's the reason so many times today that we have so much violence in the land today? Hallelujah. Because parents, rather than being parents, were striving to be friends with their children rather than discipline them when they need discipline. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 5 declares, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for man to hear the song of fools. See, you have to know the difference, Zion. That's why it's so important, hallelujah, when our children, hallelujah, become of age, start going to junior high, high school, hallelujah, that they take time to listen to their parents because this is a delicate stage in their life. And if they do not listen to what their parents are striving to teach them, then they have some little classmates Hallelujah, that will have them out on a limb, and before you know it, they'll be into something and they can't get out of. How many of you know? Because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the Bible says the rod of correction drives it far from them. And that's why, you know, I, I know you hear me talk about my mother every Sunday. That's because she left an indelible imprint on my life. How many of you can speak of your mother every Sunday, every day? Hallelujah, because she did not play. She had 10 children. She didn't have time to play with Tom, Dick, and Harry. Hallelujah, she had to set it in order before we left home so that when you came to church, hallelujah, and we were in Sunday school on time, I'm talking about a mother getting 10 children ready, hallelujah, on time, Hallelujah. The pastors never had to look for us. Never wondered, oh, is, is Mother Emery coming today? You know, she got 10 children to give her. No. Mm -mm. The bishop knew we were going to be there live and in color on time. Why? Because she had a standard. I'm not going to be late. Hallelujah. And I remember in the, uh, her later years in life when she no longer drove, so they had moved out to Portage, Indiana, my dad and my mom, my mother. We always called her mother, never mom. Hallelujah. And so I were picking them up from the west side of Gary, and I'd have to go way to Portage. She like, and I want you here, and I want you here on time so that we can make it to church on time. I think out of two and a half years, I was late twice. Holla, and boy, did I get it <laughs> She like, I don't want to be late. I said, Mother, I understand. <laughs> I'm like, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. I mean, hallelujah. So that was embedded in her. Hallelujah. Let's be on time. And that, have, that has been imparted unto me. Hallelujah. Out of the school of business, we learned before, you know, when you're entering an appointment or whatever, you're 15 minutes before time. You're there waiting on the interviewer. Hallelujah. You, you, you're not dragging in. You're all time. Hallelujah. And you just receive it for what is given in the spirit of truth. 
Hallelujah. Let the church shout hallelujah. Because see, when we're in need of the Lord to do something for us, do we want him coming a day late? No. We want him to come even yesterday. I'm like, Lord, what's taking you so long? Hallelujah. So therefore, he's coming back for a church that have made themselves ready. We say good and faithful. Hallelujah. That's what I want the Lord to say. Well, guess what? You got to be good and faithful. Somebody ought to type that on the comment line. I must be good and faithful. Because he's not going to say it for you just because your name is Valerie. As beautiful as that name is, he's like, mm -mm, not today, girl. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Wrong answer. Hallelujah. But I must strive to be good and faithful. And that's why I do what I do. Because I want to make it in. I want my name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let the church shout hallelujah. <laughs> Ah, the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. So understand why the Lord instituted, hallelujah, that sometimes you're going to be reproved and rebuked. Hallelujah. It's only to make you better. Hallelujah. And the Bible declares that you ought to receive it in the spirit that is given. Is that right? Hallelujah. So here, hallelujah, as the Lord institutes what we consider the Lord's supper, while he was yet going through, hallelujah, having this time with his disciples, he knew, hallelujah, there would be one that would betray him. And he said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. And the, they started asking, Lord, is it I? Is it I? And he said, the one who dips his hand. <laughs> Come on here. Keep in mind, he knows everything. Hallelujah. That's the one that's going to betray me. So sometimes Zion, hallelujah, he had 12 and one of them betrayed him. So don't think it's strange, hallelujah, when you have 12 friends, family members, hallelujah, and one of them betray you, hallelujah. He said the very one whose feet is under the table. And how many of you know when you invite your family over for Christmas, Thanksgiving, how all of them got their feet under the table. They're ready to eat. And it may be one that may betray you. Don't think it's strange. If they betrayed him, hallelujah, and you're in his army, how, don't think it's strange, hallelujah, when you may be betrayed, hallelujah, because everybody that's patting you on the back, he, 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 ha, they're not happy for you. Hallelujah. And you better believe Satan is going to be with Satan. Hallelujah. So you better know whose side you on. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, my God. So then the Lord have declared hallelujah in his word. Hallelujah. As we move on here. Mm. He says, for I have received, verse 23 of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He knew, hallelujah, here we are having our wonderful meal together and somebody, hallelujah, got something wicked on their mind. Ha, ah, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. So here we find God, he did give grace. He said his grace, hallelujah, blessings before just start gobbling up and eating and drinking and being merry. Is that right? You should always give thanks over your food. You should always pray over your meal. Hallelujah. Is that right? Hallelujah. Ah, and the Bible teaches us the Lord. Hallelujah. He is Zion. Oh, yes, he is. He is the bread of life. And we have to know this. Hallelujah. It's in him, I continue to say, that we live and move and have our being. And without him, we're just nothing. Hallelujah. I know, I know, I know. I know some think there's something anyway, but you know the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You tell them you know the truth because you've been in Pastor Val's Sunday school class. Let the church out. Hallelujah. Ah, John, you have your Bibles? John 6. 
verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Zion, you ought to thank God that you're connected to the Father God in heaven. Huh? You're connected through his Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He says in his word, John 6, 33, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. It's because he gave that you and I can live today. Huh? It's because he gave. And that's why I love that verse. As a matter of fact, that was my first sermon preached 30 plus years ago. St. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his best gift. And sometimes, hallelujah, some of us have the nerve, hallelujah, to just want to issue out a little bit of this. Pinch off a little bit of that for the Lord. Because you got to realize it's all his. <laughs> all the silver, all the gold, all that you think you have is his. Hallelujah. And if he was just to blow on it, you wouldn't have zip. Matter of fact, your life would be out. Hallelujah. And then we want to pinch him off a crumb. Tell somebody that devil is a liar. Not today. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Over. I love you today. Thank you for joining us this morning. Mm. Zion, God gave his best. We should always be willing to give our best. Always. Hallelujah. That's why God is a God of excellence, and he wants us to serve him in the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Because you think about it. Hallelujah, you're not going to give some folks anything at any time. But then you're going to give God that? God's not pleased with that. He like, how dare you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm giving you life. Hallelujah, and then you're going to put something else before me? I don't think so. No, hallelujah. We need to count up the cost on what it means to truly serve the Lord. Because one thing for certain, child of God, time is ticking. We're at the end of the year of 2023 already. Oh, the last month, the first Sunday of December of 2023, these doors are closing. Who knows who's going to make it out these next few days? We don't know. So while the blood, the old folks of Zion used to tell me, is yet running warm in your vein, you need to make your calling and election sure. You need to make sure that you're in tune for God. I'll let nothing, mother, father, sister, brother, husband, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, aunts, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. That's a decision you have to make. You have to make it. The Bible declares, Zion, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Can't nobody save you but you. You're the one. Hallelujah. So you have to know, hallelujah, ah, oh, that I must, hallelujah, I've got to make some adjustments. I've got to make some adjustments, hallelujah. Because sometimes you got to know some folk will drag you down. Hallelujah. They'll drag you down in the ground and you'll be wondering, why am I going through this? Why am I going? Honey, it's because who you're associating with. That's why the Bible declares, hallelujah. Well, I guess it's time for a pit stop. Ah, hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, hallelujah, you have to know who you're associating with. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. you saved, sanctified, and your best Buddy, your best girlfriend ain't saying something wrong with that picture. Light and darkness, they go in two different directions. Now, I know it's tight, but it's right. Let the church out. Hallelujah. 
Woo! Tell somebody, y'all. Y'all gonna tell me. Said keep keep on teaching, Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah, because we need to know the truth. That's what's going to make the difference in our lives, Zion. And see, I say this because I'm so grateful that I had a pastor to stand flat-footed and tell me the truth. I'm grateful for that. See, I don't take it for granted and run out to church and then you don't see me no more for three years. That devil is a liar. No, wrong answer. Because that devil want to destroy you. He want to destroy me. So you better make sure that you have your ears open. Hallelujah. To receive all that the Lord has for you. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, I don't hear a mouse in the house this morning. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah, but he's our bread of life, Zion. Hallelujah, oh yes he is, and he wants the best for you. Hallelujah, he came down from heaven. The Bible says he wrapped his, God wrapped his own self in flesh so that he could come down through 42 generations to save you and me. That's how much he loves you. And then you're going to put something else, someone else before him? I don't think so. Wrong answer. Hallelujah. Ah, because Zion, he is our spiritual food. Hallelujah. The Bible declares, hallelujah, in Jeremiah chapter 3. Hmm? Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And we're wrapping up. My time is fleeting. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You must have it. Knowledge and understanding. We can't go to heaven studying the Bible on our own. Oh, no. He said, I give you pastors. Everybody needs a pastor. I'm a pastor, and I have a pastor. Huh? Everybody needs a pastor. He says, I give you pastors after my own heart. Why? Because they're going to feed you. They're going to nourish you. They're going to tell you what's right and wrong. Darling, you need to, hey, straighten up, slow your road. They're going to tell you. Why? Because they love you. They're hearing from the God of glory. Hallelujah. And he only wants what's best for you. Ah, the Bible is clear. Hallelujah. That God, he's that spiritual food. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, huh? And all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Zion, he is our spiritual food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's so awesome, hallelujah, till he have allowed us, hallelujah, to partake of the bread of life. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, so he declared in his word, hallelujah. Mmm, hallelujah, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, hallelujah. Ah, let's read verse 24. Hallelujah. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. Hallelujah. This is my body, which is broken for me, for you. This do in remembrance of me. So as often as we're doing this, Zion, hallelujah, let's keep in mind. Hallelujah. This is in remembrance of him. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, the Bible is right. Hallelujah. And after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. So this is all done, Zion. As we call this communion, we're, we're doing this. This is a sacred time that's set aside for us to remember. We're doing this in remembrance of him. Hallelujah. This is 
the new covenant. Hallelujah. Ah, come on, Zion. Let's turn our Bibles here. Hallelujah. Because we know, hallelujah, that we are a part, hallelujah, of this new covenant. Is that right? Hallelujah. The Bible declares in Matthew 26, 28. Hallelujah. You get with me? Thank God for you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Zion, that's why it's so important that you take time, hallelujah, to do it like the Bible says, to do it, hallelujah, like the Bible says. He gave Peter, hallelujah, the keys to the kingdom, hallelujah. And Peter stood with the 11 on the day of Pentecost when the church began, and he said in Acts 2, hallelujah, 38, 40, 41, 42, hallelujah, and hallelujah, that we, hallelujah, should be baptized in his name, huh? In that watery grave in his name for the remission of sins. That's his way. Hallelujah. It's not Valerie's way. It's not Jenny's way. Tom, Dick, Harry, Susie, Sally. It's his way. And keep in mind, it's his heaven. So we have to do it like he says. It's a tragedy when you go to these funerals or home-going services. Hallelujah. You know people have their own thoughts and ideas about how we should be saved. And you don't have to do this and undo that. But I'm inclined to believe that you need to do just what the word of God says to do. Hallelujah, because when that name is called over you in the watery, watery grave, it's called over you for the removing, for the remission of sins. Hallelujah, and it matters not how much Holy Ghost you have. Hallelujah, if you haven't been born of the water and the spirit, hallelujah, your salvation is incomplete. Hallelujah. Ah, we're talking about the new birth. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Mm. So the Bible is clear, hallelujah, ah, that we, hallelujah, are born again, hallelujah. Ah, this new covenant, hallelujah, that we have, hallelujah, and it's in Christ Jesus. Let the church shout hallelujah. Because see, the blood of Christ, Zion, it's real. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that I said yes to his will and yes to his way. Hallelujah. I mean, I may be intelligent in some areas, but you best to believe I don't know it all. And you better believe you don't know it all either. So therefore, he has the formula. And we must do it according to what he has said. Not to a revelation that I got. Hallelujah. Not to a revelation that Tommy, Dick, or Harry got, but to the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ah, the Bible declares, and we're moving right along here because my time is just about out. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Zion, that blood, when that name is called, that blood is applied, hallelujah, to remove your sins deep that are in your conscious mind. Hallelujah. That's why when you come up out of the water, when the name of Jesus has been called upon over you, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. See, the disciples knew who he was talking about. Hallelujah, because he got a name. Hallelujah. And that name is what? Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. He says in Acts 20, 28, and I'm wrapping up. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I take my assignment in truth. Hallelujah. I don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. I do this. Hallelujah, because I love to do this. I have been called to do this. Hallelujah. So therefore, as people of God, I urge and encourage you, don't take your assignment that the Lord has given you for granted. 
Hallelujah. Don't take him because he could have chose anybody's mother. He could have chose anybody's auntie. He could have chose anybody's grandmother. He could have chose anybody's sister. He could have chose anybody's uh, husband, anybody's father, but he chose you. Don't take it for granted. I urge you to run while it's time to run. As the old folks of Zion said, while the blood is running warm in your vein. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, let us move along quickly here. A couple of more points that I want to share with you. Hallelujah. I'm so glad today that the Lord have given us spiritual memory. Are you glad about it, Zion? Hallelujah. He wants you to remember mm, why you're doing Hallelujah, what you're doing. While you are partaking of this Lord's Supper, as we call communion. Hallelujah, having fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Ah, because this memory calls to mind. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord did for me. Zion, he did it for me. He did it for you. Hallelujah. And we ought to stop and tell him Thank you. Let the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So this feast of remembrance, hallelujah, we're wrapping up. Hallelujah. This feast, hallelujah, of remembrance, hallelujah. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Tell somebody he's coming back again. Come on, Zion, on this Facebook chat line. Tell somebody he's coming. He's coming. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he did. Ah, the Bible is clear. Hallelujah. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. This is just not a cracker and a cup of juice. Hallelujah. This is a sacred time. Hallelujah. And you have to know this. Hallelujah. Therefore, you have to set yourself up. Hallelujah. That I'm going to drink this. Hallelujah. After I've examined myself, Lord, forgive me. Hallelujah, Susie, Sally, Tom, Dick, and Harry. If I've offended you, forgive me. Why? I want to drink this as worthy. Hallelujah. As the Lord is counting me worthy. Because we'll never be worthy of ourselves. Hallelujah. But the Lord is counting me worthy to receive this. This is just not something that we're doing the first of the month of each month or every other quarter. No. Hallelujah. Ah, so therefore, hallelujah, as often as we do this, hallelujah, because his forthcoming, mm, the second coming has been foretold. Let the church shout hallelujah. Ah, my God, my God, hallelujah. So as we continue, hallelujah, ah, the Bible has said even in the scripture, and I'm going to just wrap it up, hallelujah, because I see my time is out. Hallelujah. How the Lord chastens those that he loves. See, sometimes we think it, you know, I used to think, I'm like, Lord, my mother must don't like us too much because we get too many whippings. Every time you turn around, she whip one, she whip all ten. I'm like, sign her up. She's lost her mind. She's bazooka crazy. Hallelujah. But I see now. That's because she loved us. She wanted us to go in the right direction. Hallelujah. Anybody that don't chastise their children, they don't love them. Hallelujah. Ah, the Bible is clear. Hallelujah. And I'm wrapping up. Hallelujah. Ah, my God, that because God, hallelujah, he loves us. He chastises us. He said in Proverbs 3, 11, my son despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction. You ought to be grateful when the Lord think enough of you to chasten you. You ought to be grateful when the Lord think enough of you to spank you. Holly, because you know you've been out of line. You know you haven't been doing what he told you to do. You know it, so you need a little spanking. Get yourself in line, because we want the Lord to say good and faithful. Is that right? 
Ah, the Bible says in Revelation 3.19, and I'm letting you go. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I'm going to let you go with that. Zion, it's time <laughs> to get your house in order. It's time. Hallelujah, because the time is not very long. You see what's happening in our world today. They have your children in school. They're teaching them everything that's anti-Christ. Huh? Every commercial is perverted. You need to be bringing them children to Sunday school, to Bible class, to worship service while it's still time. Because all they're getting at school is a bunch of perversion. And then you don't teach them the word when they get home because you're too busy. Right. Hallelujah. So you put them in front of a computer. You put them in front of some cartoons that's perverted. Ah, I know it's tight, but it's right, so I'm going to let you go. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. He loves you. He just wants to save you. And I want to see you saved as his mouthpiece. I want to see you saved. And saved for real. Not this twisted and perverted. A form of godliness but denying the power thereof. That's, that's, that's not it. Hallelujah. Till next Sunday. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. Next Sunday 945. Hope to see you. If you're in the area of 5829 West 15th. Avenue in the great city of Gary, Indiana, we invite you to come on out. Our morning worship starts at 11. Of course, on Wednesday and Friday, 11 o'clock, is prayer. We need to pray today like never before. Following that at noon is our Bible study. Come on and partake of the goodness of the Lord. I love you. Till next time, shalom. Bye-bye.